connecting to cloud. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Life in Lockdown. Um, <laughs> I just made that title up this afternoon, and Nicole is my first <laughs> guest, and she's in her pajamas because I texted you. Like, what? Did I text you 20 is, minutes ago? Yeah, it is 10.34 p.m me at after 10 o'clock to say you'd like to do this <laughs> so, well, you know, no. to be fair i was like planning further in advance and it just kind of... and you're like hey let's do let's it, do it now. now so you know i still had mascara and lip gloss on from my facebook launch party so you know so you it just worked that. i just cleaned my glasses <laughs> <laughs> just for you Look at that. <laughs> and i like moved a chair around my bedroom right you did, you did, you did a lot of moving around to get the right angle, fine. I did. Mm -hmm. So what are we here? So you are what, Thursday night, and where are you? I am in Idaho. Idaho, and mm -hmm. I'm in New Zealand, and it is Friday afternoon, almost evening-ish. Yeah. Yeah, so you're in your pajamas, and I might have kids busting any, any time now, because I have not pre-booked this with my husband or with anyone in my family. No, I know my kids just came in to say goodnight, so who knows what will happen? It's who life on lockdown, happen. you know? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so that's the topic. So tell me, what was your life like before COVID-19 and what does it look like now? So I actually said this a little earlier on my um, Facebook Live party is that so February 1st, I actually went into um, not knowing shelter in place or lockdown was ever going to be a thing, um, that I went into my own social distancing situation because I've been working on this book <laughs> that I'm on deadline for. So I had already told myself, okay, cancel all the things. Like this is my focus month. Like I'm going to write, 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 write. I wrote 47,000 words in a book. Um, in the month of February, and then COVID-19 happened, and then the world said, you may not leave your house, extrovert. We do not care about your needs for socialization. So now I'm going on like week eight <laughs> in my life. <laughs> so it's been, a, it's been a much longer time than the, than the you know, mandated shelter in place movement in my hometown. So, so what, what are the roles where, I, where you are? What are, what are your, um, you know, Idaho's fairly loose. I think that, um, you know, they, you know, the guidelines we've just kind of, as a family have said, we're not going out, but maybe like once a week to pick up groceries. Uh, we have some free, you know, a freezer stocked with food and meat and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, we've, we've pretty much limited our goings out to, either my husband or myself just doing a grocery store run that's down the road and coming back and wiping all the th grocery trips have taken much longer now because now we're wiping all the things down you know like there's a there's a lot there's a process there's a grocery store process now that the kids are aware of so yeah it's a lot of wiping down all of the grocery store products and then sanitizing the counters and you know all of that. So it's like what about it's... school for the kids? Oh, they are home. They're yeah. Home? Are schools yeah, out? Home. They are home. So school normally gets out here like second week of June. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, they are home now. It, they've declared it for the whole I think on Monday this week they said there is no more school for the rest of the year. Wow. Rest of the academic year. Yeah. Wow. And you guys too, you... right? Pardon? Are you guys on that same? Yeah, so we went into level four lockdown 16 days ago. Um, okay. And so that, yeah, there's school, school's out. Everyone's, if you can, work from home except essential workers. Yes. Uh, everything is closed except for supermarkets, pharmacies, petrol stations, and doctors. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's pretty much it. So even like here, like, no takeout like the two days before because we got 48 hours notice our prime minister announced on the monday afternoon that we were going into lockdown on the wednesday midnight mm. um and i think everyone had kind of assumed that even at like our level four that like 
takeaways would still be open and she's like nah it's like it's all shutting down and the, like the the queues at mcdonald's drive through for two days were just like bananas and they're like we need all the fries all the yeah. big bags oh yeah. my word yeah um, so we still have some there are still some um which is interesting that's how we are different because we in in at least north idaho still have some like drive-through takeaway um it's limited kind of per restaurant so i'm not sure how like how who decides that but some even some coffee shops are open like not like starbucks but like some independently owned ones are and um a few takeout stores so if you take out restaurants um we haven't we just haven't been to any we've just been making our own stuff so yeah and you just released in the middle of all of this this yes. before yes. i call you mine yeah i get to say it was one of my favorite books of 2019 because i got to read it four months early oh yes <laughs> my favorite 2019 and 2020 so what's it like releasing a book in a global pandemic well it's been nuts um you know i think the hardest part has just been trying to balance that sensitivity when you are you know trying to launch something that has had you know not just my efforts in it but my publishing house's efforts my editors um and just a lot of backing that goes there's just a lot of people and i know you know that lots of stuff lots of steps involved and processes involved and marketing involved and then this hits um there's just that for me there it's been this sensitivity balance of how much do I talk about this book or push this book or whatever in trying to be sensitive to what's going on in the world, you know? And at the same time, realizing that, you know, we're looking, we're all kind of looking for that um, uplifting escape, you know, that hopeful escape um, that brings some levity to a situation that's, that feels hard and out of control. So it's been the weirdest, launch experience and yet um i really have been very blessed by a lot of wonderful people who have taken the time to review it and um put it on their blogs and talk about it and so you know that's the best kind of launch when i don't have to say a whole lot <laughs> i guess now the people <laughs> talk during you. the pandemic it's kind of a weird situation <laughs> <laughs> and what are you working on now um, I'm working on a new book for Bethany House um, that will release, I think, mm, March of 2021. So I'm just about to turn it in and then it will go through editing and, you know, all of the channels basically. But I should be, I'll probably be doing, I don't have the cover yet, but I'm guessing I'll probably get the cover in summer. So yeah, it's, it's well on its way. Can you tell us anything about it? Um, I think so. I don't, I don't really know what I'm not supposed to say. So, you know, <laughs> just ask forgiveness later, but, um, just like, tell yeah. Rainer it's my fault. Yeah, I will. I'll say, it. you know what, Cara, she's really, she's like a hard pusher. So I don't know. <laughs> um, so it's, I, you know, I really need to work on the elevator pitch for this book. I, I haven't really, uh, tried to reduce my, <laughs> my many sentences, my premise. Um, but it's basically, you know, the whole journey is um, a very well-to-do, successful um, social media influencer named Molly, who uh, has done very well for herself, but kind of through some various uh, measures, needs to get some real life experience with some people who are needing help um just kind of like underprivileged an underprivileged group and with her gaining that experience she kind of gets to go to a next level of success um but while she is there at this uh transitional youth house is where she ends up uh a lot of lessons are learned and it doesn't go quite as she thought it was going to go and of course there's a love story with someone that just is very um ironic for her to fall for. So I'll say it like that. <laughs> so it's a love story in a very ironic place 
for a girl who has much of her life just kind of thought of her own success and now has to think of the success of others. So. And what's been the hardest thing about writing this one? Oh, um, it has really been a challenge to switch my brain from kind of the reality of the physical world that we're in right now to the escape of fiction, which honestly before COVID-19 has not been something I've really had to, um, has not really ever been a major challenge. Like even with the adoption of our daughter, like there was a lot of life happening, but then escaping to fiction was kind of this, um, this break. And yet this time, I think the massive uncertain uncertainties and because it's worldwide and it's not just in our home, um, trying to escape the physical real world um, to go into this place of fiction and finish up this writing, it really has been a, a true challenge, mm. a true challenge. Yeah, I, and I think that most creatives that you know you look at on social media right now will say something similar and i thought it was just me and then i was starting to find like oh my gosh it's not just me like there's lots of writers and and singers and comedians and you know all kinds of people who are kind of in the entertainment business and um you know creative business that are are struggling to get into that that mindset to be able to create when the world is what it is right now yeah, I, I mean, I said to someone on social media the other day that, because I'm in yeah. edits at the moment on for Start With Me, and I was saying, you know, I'm so grateful that I'm in edits right now and that I have the raw product in my hands to work with because I can't actually imagine being in a creative space where I'm trying to create this whole new world and this whole new story and this whole new set of characters right now with yeah. ever, the whole yeah. global situation. Like, it, yeah. I just, I actually can't get my brain around how I would how I would be able to, like separate myself off that much. It's um, hard. And, and I find that for me, it takes a lot longer for me to kind of um, get into that headspace. Like I really, it's like, I almost need an hour to try and like dive into a place where I can really settle into the world that I've created and to the characters I've created. Like I have to, um, this has been my number one survival. This is my survival tip here because I do have a nine-year-old an 11 year old and a 14 year old living in this home plus my husband. And so I kind of have to, um, drown all other things out. And that has, that actually has helped me focus a little bit better, but it's mm. still, it's, it really is a challenge. It's a big mental challenge. And what, uh, what have been the other things that have helped you get through the last eight weeks plus however more are to come? Yeah. Um, yeah, with more to come, right. Um, Zoom has been a great thing, you know, I, gosh, to have been on the ground floor of putting stock in Zoom, you know, we all have missed out. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what that could have been, right? Um, <laughs> truly, uh, you know, I've been able to Zoom with some friends um, a couple times a week, which has been really great for my, just my extroverted heart that just needs that. Um, I have walked almost every day, a couple of miles, I live up on a hill. So I walk down the hill and up the hill. Um, sometimes it's with my neighbor who lives a couple houses above. And we just, you know, we literally walk six feet apart, um, down the hill and up the hill. And, and they've been, um, really faithful at social distancing as well. Um, but sometimes it's just by myself and, you know, music. And, um, that has actually been very, very good for me just to be out in the fresh air and, and remembering that there's more, there's more, you know, there's more to life and there's more to the world than, than the news. And what do you miss the most from pre-February? Yeah, pre-February, I know. <laughs> um, like no question, question, yeah, yeah, no question being with people, you know, I miss hugs, I miss um, dates with friends, um, you know, you, you, it becomes so normal. And I think that's the biggest thing for so many people, right. Is like just grabbing a coffee, you know, before I went and picked up the kids or meeting a friend, um, right before I picked up the kids from school was very normal in my world because I do have kind of a more isolating job. And so for me that time, like as soon as 
I leave my computer, I want it to be full of people. Um, that's what fills me up. That's what gives me energy. That's what makes me feel like there's, you know, just motivation on so many different levels for me. So losing that physical contact with people has been really, really hard. And, um, you know, I'm grateful to have my husband. He really is my best friend. And I'm like, you know, he's an introvert, but I'm like, listen, we're going to, you're going to have to like rise to the occasion on like lots of things. <laughs> This is my time of need. No, I mean, this is my time of need right now. Um, and even for my boys and for Lucy, you know, we've played a lot more games. We've had a lot more conversation. My kids have helped. Um, we kind of are on this new rotation of making dinners together. And we've always had dinner together, but um, I've had them kind of be a lot more involved in the process and, you know, just looking for those little ways to interact because, you know, yeah, we need, we need each other. Yeah. You know, I think it's so, so, so obvious um, when we don't have that connection, you know, where we lack in our own, in our own spirits, in our own hearts. Um, so yeah, definitely just being with people. Yeah. All right, everyone, that kind of brings us to the end of our time. Um, if you live on my Facebook page, you have already seen me raving about before I called you mine, which is Nicole's new book that just came out, what, 10 days ago? It's super yeah. recent. Um, yeah, really if you recent. haven't, you need to get your hands on this because it is amazing. And I promise you'll see it finaling for all of the awards next year. Um, oh, <laughs> really well. All right. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks for being Thank my first so guest. Much. Thanks yeah, for showing up in your pajamas. But I, I will be like, other so why I don't know. we just do this now? I'm just going to put know. my credit card in and upgrade <laughs> Zoom and you can go put a bra on and we'll just make it work. I know. I'm like, I'm like, I am in my pajamas. I have not yet washed my face, but I am in my pajamas. And you said, okay, we're doing it anyways. I said, okay, that's how much I love you. That <laughs> is how much I love you, Cara. <laughs> I love you too. All right. I'm just saying. <laughs>